Hello listeners, my name is Anya and welcome to my short story podcast. In today's podcast, we'll be taking a close look into Eden Robinson's Trap Lines. This is by far my favorite short story I have read. So let's start the podcast with a quick briefing of the story. Trap Lines tells the story of a boy named Will. Will is trapped in an abusive and neglectful home. At one point in the story, Will's teacher, Mrs. Smythe, offers Will a safe space in her home with her and her husband. As a pre-service teacher, I know this is against proper protocol and even considered unprofessional. My question for the story is why did the Smiths not call the police or child services in order to take proper action to help save Will from his abusive home? This would have drastically changed the story, obviously, and would have possibly created a better ending for Will rather than running away. This question is also worth asking because the Smice wanted to help Will, but instead drove him farther away from them. I argue that Eden Robinson had a target audience of teachers and professionals who work with children when she wrote Trap Lines. She wanted teachers to read this in order to solve teacher guilt or to have professionals working with children recognize the effects of maltreatment of children. Firstly, Eden Robinson targeted teachers as her audience for this book in order to solve teacher guilt. Firstly, Eden Robinson targeted teachers as her audience for this book in order to solve teacher guilt. Robinson possibly wanted teachers to recognize symptoms of abuse and set an example of how not to help children of abuse. Mr. and Mrs. Smythe had good intentions, but better measures should have been taken to have Will removed from his situation. Mrs. Smith most likely felt the need to take Will into her home because many teachers experience teacher's guilt. According to former teacher Gregory Roper, teachers always feel as though they have not done enough for their students. Many teachers feel that what they do in the classroom does not suffice. Teachers develop strong relationships with their students and constantly feel as though they are not doing their job to the best of their abilities. Parents and students sometimes put blame on teachers for a child's learning or how they feel at school, which can add to teacher's guilt. Clearly, Mrs. Smythe feels this guilt. Mrs. Smythe brings Will to her home and asks, you weren't in class today. She is concerned for Will and even feeds him. She acts like a mother towards Will. She also calls Will's father to have his permission for Will to stay with her and her husband. This angered Will's father and possibly made Will's situation worse. The father is hungover and confronts his son about possibly telling his teacher what happens to him at home. The father repeatedly asks Will, you must have told them something, in a very angry manner. We do not know what the father is referring to, but the reader has a strong intuition that it's referring to abuse. After the conversation with the father, Will avoids Mrs. Smythe. Her trying to help Will effectively drove Will further away. This may be Robinson's way of telling teachers, there is only so much you can do to protect someone. Proper measures needed to be taken. Smythe is an important character for Will as well as the reader so teachers can relate and forgive themselves for not being able to do everything for their students. The other hypothesis is that Eden Robinson decided to have the Smice bring Will into their home to show her target audience, mostly people who work with children, how maltreatment of a child can have lasting effects on the child in question. Child neglect is when a parent fails to protect a child from harm and potential harm. Child abuse is an important topic because, according to Statistics Canada, one-third of children aged 15 or older in 2014 were victims of maltreatment. In the United States, 97.5% of all maltreatment cases were cases of neglect. A neglectful parent also fails to provide their child with physical, emotional, medical, school, and basic needs. The reader knows that Will is in a neglectful home. Will mentions his low socioeconomic status and poor hygiene when he says, I'm starting to smell bad. I haven't had a shower in days. I wish I had some clean clothes. I wish I had some money to buy a toothbrush. The reader also knows that Will is being hit by his brother. 
Mr. Smythe, for example, notices a very big bruise on Will's ribs. Will is unable to sleep because of the pain his brother inflicted on him. Will says, It's now almost seven and my ribs hurt. Mostly, I can ignore it, but Eric hit me pretty hard and they're bruised. Even though Will is needed of a more loving and caring home, he rejects an opportunity to do so. The Smice offer Will a home with no substance abuse, plenty of food, and clean clothes, but Will still prefers to go to his parents. The first time Will spends the night at the Smice, he tries to call his dad to come get him, but the father does not answer, and Mr. Smythe refuses to let Will go home on his own. Also, when Mr. Smythe offers Will to live with him and his wife, Will immediately refuses. Victims of abuse often find it difficult to escape the neglect or abuse. Will also engages in risky behavior such as smoking and skipping class. Will mentions skipping class to hang out with his friends. Will says, I skip gym, I skip history, I hang out with Craig and Tony in the Paradise Arcade. Will mentions being a smoker when he says, I bum a cigarette off this girl with really tight jeans. At the end of the story, Will runs away from home, but the reader is left to wonder what will become of Will. His future, considering his behavior throughout the story, makes the reader think Will might not have his happily ever after. Will's older brother, Eric, is also showing signs of being stuck in the cycle of abuse. Eric is addicted to weed and partying, so much so that his father kicks him out of the house. Tony is also involved with a group of friends that use cocaine and other illicit drugs. Furthermore, Tony starts abusing his own brother, something he learned from his father. Tony grabs Will by the hair, punches Will. At one point, Eric pushes Will against the wall and hits Will in the face. Their father sees what's happening and says, pick someone on your own size, unless you want to deal with me. Will also mentions another instance of abuse by the father onto Eric. Will says, Eric got hit pretty hard by dad. Eric is stuck in a cycle of abuse by hitting his younger brother, just like his dad hits him. Eden Robinson is showing how impactful abuse can be and needs to be addressed right away. All in all, Eden Robinson could have purposely chosen to have Mrs. Smythe try to have Will live with her and her husband instead of taking proper precautions with child services because she had a reader in mind. She might have wanted teachers to avoid teachers' guilt or for people who work with children to help recognize how vicious the cycle of abuse can be. Eden Robinson's story is a sad one, but one that happens to many children across the world. Eden Robinson recognizes symptoms and the impact abuse carries onto children. This short story is a good step in trying to help children of abuse by shedding light on this topic and creating feelings of sadness and empathy throughout the story for the reader.